I was the chaplain that was here at seven in the morning when our first patient died of COVID. And we need to talk to the family right after the doctor just told the daughter by phone that her mother died. I was serving this one shift and brought a dad, the husband, and his three teenage boys into the room. The daughter and her sister and the other family member, they were not able to hold her mother's hand because the virus was so contagious. The 16-year-old son, the youngest of them all, began to smash on the window saying, Mama, Mama, why can't I come and take care of the quiero? I love you, why can't I? His why um, has stuck with me for a long time. I will never forget the voices of those two women crying not being able to be with their mother when their mother passed. People ask me all the time, how can you be with dying and sick children as if that is something very strange to them. And I tell them, it's a calling. I've been called to do this, and it is a gift. We had the need to adapt, to be flexible, and to be creative. And we say, we can do video calls so the family can say their goodbye, the, the patients can hear their voice of their loved ones. And we started a whole program, saying, how can we accompany the patient, the family, and the staff? During this past year, it's been quite a, a horrific change, I would say. And yet, virtual telehealth, telechaplaincy, uh, which I didn't know existed probably a year or two ago, has allowed us to, to be radically relational, rooted in this connection with people all over. I cannot imagine, I was so proud of us. In the midst of it was so difficult, we were there. One of the aspects of chaplaincy that has been challenging is understanding how important the role of the chaplain is. We're part of the psychosocial team that adds the spiritual component. So we treat the person as body, mind, spirit, and that spiritual component is, is our venue, if you will. And so what we try to do here at CTU is not only address health in the courses, but health in our formation, where they begin to learn spiritual practices that will help them in their journey as chaplain. I don't think anybody else has taught me as much about the importance of the inner life as this institution, CTU. In this type of ministry, there can be a high level of burnout. Sometimes we were overwhelmed, we were so tired, we felt like we have nothing else to give. And I think I pray like never in my life. What supported me and what supported us as a team was praying. I am a spiritual first responder for the medical first responders. And so in order to be there for them, to be prayed up and ready and able to be present to them, to be that professional listener that I am was essential. I think it's critical today to support institutions that are lifting up the sacred. Pre-COVID, during COVID, into the future, there are places like CTU, and maybe there's no place like CTU either, that want to train ministers to work in the vineyard of the Lord. CTU is in many ways a Pope Francis school, I think, very attentive to those on the peripheries that Pope Francis keeps reminding us of, that sensitivity to those who are often the forgotten. And I think that's just a, a theme that runs through all of our courses here and all of our ministry training, to be sensitive to the suffering of the people on the peripheries. It has been a very hard work, and yet there has been a blessing within the struggle. I've not had any regrets. It's been 21 years, and, and I'm still going strong. Because I don't have the answer for suffering, but at least I have the words to engage in a dialogue when people are suffering. What I discover here in my ministry and the tools I get from CTU is that sometimes we cannot cure, but we can continue caring. Uh, it's a mystery that we're living into. It's a great challenge. We're trying to get better at it. We're learning as we go. Some days are better than others. CTU, I think, said it's okay to live with mystery and that that's what faith is about, is to hang on, even when you don't know what's coming next. We don't know the end of this, and so we just have to be flexible and be patient and trust God. I don't know where we're headed now, but I'm sure we have a lot of supporters out there curious and willing to help us grow.